You've all asked for it, so let's get to calling. Welcome to SETI Astro. As always, be sure to get the latest version. Go to SETIAstro.com under Astro Program, SETI Astro Suite. Has the link to the GitHub repository where you can download the latest version. So I definitely want to show the new features in the Blink Comparator. Uh, to help with culling and some of you may refer to this as like subframe selector if you're familiar with that term but the idea is to uh, get rid of bad frames prior to ever even getting them into your your stacking program or into stacking suite i hear all the time especially from uh, beginners you know why why were my frames rejected they were good enough that's very subjective so using something like Blink Comparator here with uh, metrics or something like Subframe Selector. It's a, takes take that guesswork out, right? You, you actually can get rid of those frames that aren't up to snuff prior to ever getting them into your stacking program. And I also want to show some other uh, new features as well uh, with like the 3D plotter and, and a few other items. So let's get into it here. Uh, with the new version under Blink Comparator, it looks the same, but there's going to be a button that says Show Metrics. So let's go ahead and load up some images. I have some images here from a C-Star. Gra grab a whole bunch of them here. Now during the initial load, it has to load all the images in, normalize all the images, and in this case, debayer them so we could uh, display them properly. All right, once they're loaded in, Blink Comparator works just like, just like before. And the thing that kind of bothers me about um, some of the nomenclature around the C-Star is the reason why they don't allow longer exposures is due to field rotation. I think that's just, I think that's just marketing. Uh, the reason is, is because it is just not that great of a tracker. Um, you know, it's, it's a inexpensive, alt as computerized tracker and as it has to track things diagonally across the sky moving it both as a muesli and in altitude leads to streaking uh, because it's it's not it's not perfect there's no guiding and you can see as we uh, bounce through the stars here there's elongation in various diagonal ways uh, every once in a while you'll get one with nice tight stars and that's just the nature of this particular mount, but this is going to pertain to any mount. Culling is a very important process that I think most experienced astrophotographers definitely use, and it was much needed in my, my Blink Comparator here. So now all you have to do is click Show Metrics. It's going to go ahead and calculate all our measurements we need uh, to do that. Okay, when it's done, you're going to go ahead and get your frame metrics here and it's four different quadrants we have full width half max eccentricity the mean background brightness and star count and uh collect just uh selecting a point will flag or not flag it in the actual blink over here so if if you select one you can see it actually flags it in the blink comparator and then if you click and drag the horizontal line, you could actually set thresholds and it's going to flag all those ones that don't meet the uh, threshold you set here. So maybe we want to make sure that nothing um, over a full width half max of three gets in. Eccentricity is going to be an important one because of the uh, tracking nature of this particular uh, telescope. And you got to remember an eccentricity of like 0.5. Now you're talking it's twice as long as it is wide, essentially. And zero is a, is a perfect circle. So uh, that's something to think about there. You may have uh, brightness changes in your background. If like clouds or something come by, dawn's approaching, you may see a, a rise in your background brightness. And you may want to get rid of those few brightest ones as well. And then star counts an important one too. That's just another way of getting rid of the, the poor frames. So when clouds pass by, 
the number of stars detected is going to drop, right? The other thing is if the eccentricity is so bad on the stars, it may not even recognize them as stars and you'll have a poorer star count as well. So you're going to want to like adjust these such that you really truly are only getting the good ones now in your stack. Now when you do something like this, it's going to flag all the bad ones now that don't meet your metrics that you put in the frame here. You can see here's all the flagged bad ones. Now it's up to you with what you want to do with them. You could right click and then you could just delete all the flagged items or move all the flagged images to a different folder so you don't throw them in your stack. That's going to be the, the best things to do. That's, that's the quickest way to uh, utilize my uh, metrics here. Flag them, get rid of them. You don't need them in your stack. All right, this was, I loaded in, what, 287, actually 88 uh, luminance images throughout an entire night. These are big 45 and a half megapixel images. And you can really see how the, I started shooting pretty early and the background dropped pretty quick and then started coming up towards dawn. There were a few passing clouds in the middle of the night. You could see that background kind of jerk up. Uh, you could also see that there was definitely some um, couple, couple times where the, the mountain jiggered for whatever reason. Uh, maybe the wind, maybe, you know, I don't know, a bird landed on it. But in general, looking at the star count, you could see that the conditions, uh, transparency probably improved throughout the night. And at the very start of the evening, it's obviously a, I had a focus issue and the, the focus improved as it, it probably ran autofocus a couple different times through this uh, strip here. Uh, so those are the kind of things you're gonna be looking for in these uh, frame metrics. So you can exclude uh, bad ones here, right? So yeah, I want all of those out of there. Um, we wanna make sure that we're gonna exclude probably that big chunk too. And then in the in the background evening, we, we want to make sure that we're only getting the the dark the dark ones. And then um, actually, star count looks like it called the correct ones. Um, you know, we may want to just uh, set it up like that. So now in this case, you could see that it had a what what was needed. It, it looks like it's an aggressive culling, but it's really not. It, these are the things you don't want in your images in your stack. It could throw off alignment. Um, it's just additional processing time you, you really don't need in your uh, while the stacking is running, right? It, it, it has to look at those, measure those, try to align them. You're gonna you're gonna get rid of a world of issues and have a cleaner stack at the end by getting rid of these bad frames like this. And again, really easy now that they're all flagged. A quick right click, delete all flagged items, boom, they're gone. So real quick, I also wanted to show uh, some new features here in uh, what's in my image. So let me go ahead and get a image loaded up. All right, I had a, a request for this. I think it was a great addition. Uh, under advanced search now, if you go over here, you're gonna see all our categories are, well, now there's categories and there's colors associated with the categories and you can drill in and seeing what makes up each category of these objects, uh, whether they're galaxies and active galactic nuclei, large scale structures. These are going to be, you know, clusters, super clusters, uh, possible groups of galaxies, pairs of galaxies. There's all the different stellar types are now together and you can, you know, click them on and off by group. I also have the ability to save and load lists. So if you customize what you want to see in your image, checking and unchecking a bunch of things, you can go ahead and save that list now. Also, the other the other fun thing here, so let's, let's just go ahead and, I don't know, I'm going to just kind of define a region here and query Simbad. And now you can see that the objects themselves have these different colors. You can also click legend. It'll show you the, the colors here. You can edit all the colors. If you want your stars to be yellow and your binaries to be blue, right? Make, make the colors whatever you want. And then in the 3D distance model now, I, I've updated a bunch of stuff in here, but under the object color, choose legend color. 
and I'm just going to click OK. It'll ask me if I want to save the uh, 3D plot for offline viewing. You can, so you could definitely save that and then you could always open it up for offline viewing. Now here's my object and it uh, imported all those colors from the, from the legend in there. So you can really see, like here's the stars, here's the galaxies. And then another nice item is if you actually scroll down here, all the objects in your 3D plot are going to be listed. And really nicely up here in the plot itself, if you click any of these, it's going to open up the Sinbad uh, registry for that object. Uh, so I think that's just amazing that you can just find an object out here that looks cool to you. It, it's, a, it's a weird spot. You can click it. Boom. There's your uh, Sinbad entry for that object as well. Well, I hope these are some great new features that everybody's going to get a lot of use out of. And now we can um, move on from saying, well, I thought my... I thought my frames were good enough. Why didn't they stack? Now, now the power's in your hand to really see what's going on. Get rid of those bad frames before you even try to stack them. And you'll have much crisper, cleaner, more beautiful stacks. Please comment, like, and subscribe.